Hi everybody, John Cini here and welcome to Season 5, Episode 1 of Funk Quest and we start our long and arduous quest to find the funkiest person that we possibly can. But before we do that, we have a, a matter of uh, importance to do from Season 4 because if you listen to the crowning episode, Bob didn't actually put the crown on her own head, which she bought and paid for and got through the post. So Bob, if you want to do that... Um, Put the crown on your own head and we'll all think you look like the Queen from about 1950. So there you go. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. You are officially the grand champion Funkster from season four and hopefully back to uh, give us some assistant head Funkster direction in season five. So thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's nice to break the, uh, the L streak, as you pointed out. <laughs> You have no idea. I was a little disappointed that the crown, it literally arrived within two hours of us finishing the crowning episode. Anyways, two brand new Funksters, two gents, a man, a gentleman, a male has never won Funk Quest. So gents, here's hoping it's one of you. Uh, Sean, tell us where, who you are, where you're dialing in from. I am uh, Sean, as you just said. Uh, I'm calling you from uh, British Columbia. Uh, Port Moody is the name of the town just outside of Vancouver in Canada. Uh, but you might notice I have an American accent. I'm from the fighting city of Philadelphia. Uh, and I'm ready to be here and have some fun. Good. Excellent. The fighting city. I, have you ever run up the Rocky Steps? I have, yeah. I got, yeah. And as you can see, not that often, but I have done it, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Andrew, tell us uh, who you are and where you're dialing in from. Uh, I am Andrew which is a little town just outside of Glasgow in Scotland. Uh, and uh, I already like Sean because he's got a nice ginger background behind him. It was it uh, Rick Astley, I believe. Uh, like, that's actually Conan O'Brien. Um, oh, it was Conan O'Brien. Well, either way, they've got the same quiff. The rules of Funk Quest are simple. Each Funkster selects one of four icons. Behind each icon is a question which may or may not have anything to do with the icon. The Funkster then has one minute to tell a story, tell a joke, or maybe even answer the question. After each Funkster has answered five questions, it's up to you to vote on who you think gave the best responses. Stay tuned until the end of the show to learn how to do that. Bob, who should ask to go first? Oh, sheesh. Better accent always wins, Andrew. Question one, you can pick a guitar, a motorbike, a waterfall, or some cogs. Well, I think I've got to go for the cogs. The cogs. Where do you keep your guests away from? My entire life. <laughs> I really love being a hermit. Hermit uh, works for me. The, uh, I was the only person that loved the pandemic and wished I was still in lockdown. But uh, the more, the less people I have around me, the better. It means I can spend time with my wife and my, my twin boys, like Kieran and Connor. They might come through and like do a cameo because, well, they've been left on their own devices. So, so I mean, yeah. how does this, how does this, what do you think when lockdown came in? Oh, good. Oh, you know, excellent. Bring lockdown, what? Yeah, lockdown was March 2020, and I was like, okay, three weeks off work, you'd answer. Well, I'll just, I'll run with that, Let, uh, get some time with the kids, get some time with the wife, one that I don't often get to spend time with, which is good. And then if it wasn't for lockdown, my podcast wouldn't be up and running, which is now very successful. Uh, most people so say a physical place with that. Yeah. Well, keep, uh, keep away yeah. from this cupboard or that cupboard or something else. Um, yeah. Good answer, your life, excellent. Um, yeah, sure, you. a guitar, a motorbike, or a waterfall? Uh, I'll go with the waterfall. Waterfall. How many times have you moved house? Uh, well, my most recent move was obviously here uh, to Canada. Uh, before that, I really only moved, I want to say three or four times. Um, I actually hate moving uh, in general, um, but I found the last time uh, with being such a big move uh, across, I guess, two countries, um, it was a great cathartic experience just to get rid of things. So I kind of reached the point in my life where I started getting to the acquisition stage, uh, you know, that, that late 20s where I kept things around. Uh, and so being able to to move uh, in my early 30s and just get rid of stuff uh, was great. But uh, we're probably going to move at least one or two more times. Uh, my wife and I have kind of kind of discussed it through, but I cannot wait to not have to move ever again. <laughs> What's it like moving from one country to another, like two countries as close as US and Canada? Uh, well, it's funny. Obviously, I chose the two opposite coasts to do that. So that that close border uh, didn't really play out in my regard. The most interesting part of it was actually moving during the pandemic was my stuff had to quarantine for two weeks also. Um, so we shipped the shipping container across. Uh, so that was fun to not really have our stuff for two weeks. But uh, you know, what? if you're organized, you can get it done. And I am not. So somehow we did it anyway. You need a professor of logistics to solve that problem. Yeah. And my wife doesn't like that term. She, she just likes honey or deer. But yeah, she, she's usually that for me. <laughs> Uh, Bob, have you ever moved house? <laughs> I have moved. Um, 
I have moved 14 times in 17 years of marriage. Yes. Wow. I'm not a fan of it either. Not, not a, it feels like something you ought to get good at, but I don't. How do you feel about the moving? I, I'm fine with breaking into a new place. Generally speaking, I have a, a method to my madness. You always go to the same grocery cashier every time. And it gives you the sense of having people when you don't have people. Uh, it used to be at one point I was like, just like a wee hermit crab, just mm-hmm. going from like one shell to the other kind of. Well, which is ironic. Why did they call them hermit crabs? Because hermits stay in. But I was just going to say that. Move. Like at the point so of being it, a hermit is that you don't have to do the moving anymore. Yeah. Because I, I always thought they just took like their actual home in the back with them. And I thought, well, that's my posse. That's my people. But they actually go and they just they upscale every single time when they get bigger. Anyway, moving on. Question two. Uh, you can pick a Viking helmet, a snowscape, some bathing huts, or some beef burgers. I love my food. I've got to go with the beef burgers. Beef burgers. Mm. I know what you're going to answer on this. Which is better, big parties or small gatherings? <laughs> oh, definitely. You know my answer for this. Small gatherings, 100%. Which is ironic because I did acting and stuff. So what, I was always around big crowds. But the second you get off the stage, you were like, I just want to be left alone. Well, I like I like the, the, the peace, the smallness, well, and just being away from everything. Oh, I was just going to ask, don't small gatherings sort of obligate you to actually talk to more people? Like in a big gathering, I feel like you could just duck off Depends to how the you wall. Depends or- and- how you organize it. Like if I was having an or- uh, something in my house, like for example, uh, my boys just turned four. It was their birthday party uh, last week. So my, it was only my mom and my dad and my wife and my kids. So I just started the cooking and just said, right, on you. Well, uh, I was like, oh, I'll go and I'll get, get the cake and I've got to get the pizzas and I've got to get this and that and the next thing. So it meant that I got to just be in the kitchen on my own and my wife got to deal with uh, essentially her in-laws. I was like, okay, I'll make a tea. Brilliant. Pretty skillful. Yeah, I'd have said. Yeah. I'm quite sinister. What can I say? Surely, uh, question two, uh, a Viking helmet, a snowscape or uh, some bathing huts? Uh, the snowscape for sure. Snowscape. I can't imagine you ever getting angry, but where were you when you last got angry? You know, it's funny because it's funny. You talked about you didn't think I would get angry. I'm not really the angry type, but when I do, I tend to go white hot and then try to immediately be kind of over it. Um, so it's happened from time to time, but uh, it probably was, uh, you know, I, I play hockey, play some uh, men's league hockey, adult league hockey here, and then took a bit of a cheap shot. That was probably the last time I was truly angry. But for me, like I said, angry is really about these small fleeting bits where I just go as, as hot as I can and bring it right down. But I tend to, to uh, involve it too much. Usually in competitive sense is really the only time it truly comes out. But yeah, I guess that's the last time I got angry. And I guess it's good that I can't really recall any time prior to that. Uh, it's not an emotion I really like to live in. Is this kind of uh, recreational, semi-pro or, you know, are you actually a professional? Uh, no, so it, this is recreational, uh, you know, it's competitive and organized, uh, yeah. you know, but the, the skill level is, is definitely not anything you'd call professional, uh, but it's great. You know, it's a little bit of exercise. It's a lot of uh, competition and get some good camaraderie as well. So the SWAT team, some weekends and Tuesdays team. Um, and I didn't realize there was like going to be like some bit of, bit of biff involved in that. You know, is that? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. You, you get you get people uh, with with knives on their feet and sticks in their hands. Yeah, you, you tend to <laughs> bang each other around a little bit, and it gets pretty uh pretty hot pretty quick. What and ice? What and hockey? Is the ginger's natural environment? It's indoors at night and no heat. <laughs> yeah, actually, my ho- in my hockey career, I've I've uh, had a uh, good teammates, and uh, I worked for a hockey team for a little bit. Uh, some some famous gingers there as well. But yeah, I think you're spot on with that one. Uh, what are we on now? Question three. Bob, do you want to pick? Do you want to pick a question? Pick pick an icon for each one of these gents. The action figure. Toy man. Which commandment would you add to the ten? Thou shalt let gingers hibernate during summer. Summer. Yeah. Well, gingers don't survive well in the sun. What? Well, uh, we we we, course, we burn. Yeah. What? Well, well, and get really really bad like this. So a lot of people love the sun. We gingers we don't like it. Well, so if we could just stay indoors for six months and hide. Well, and then when it gets to winter, when everybody else wants to hide, it's nice and cold. It's nice and like, calm. We could come out, enjoy the world. And because there's only like 2% of gingers in the whole world, we won't get to it and get our heads kicked in. It'll be great. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Dracula was just a redhead in the past life. This is yeah, what I'm saying. You'd have to dye his yeah. hair black, though. That's yeah. what they do. You'd have to dye his hair black. Well, my brother actually uh, dyed his hair black once, well, and he's paler than me, and he's also redhead. And I swear he did. He looked like the Living Dead. <laughs> <laughs> so check a pulse every so often, make sure. 
Yeah. yeah. When do you uh, when do you have the sun in Glasgow? Just give us like a, a specific date. Well, I remember summer last year. It was a Tuesday. Day, yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah. What's Sean's? What's Sean going to have, Bob? Ah, uh, the fast looking car. Car, yeah, of course, yeah. Which TV series have you binged on? Uh, the last TV series that I binged on that I just finished. Uh, was the show The Americans uh, that aired on FX in, in the States, things like that. But it's about uh, Russian spies that are living as Americans uh, through the kind of the, the 80s, things like that. But ironically, we finished it right before uh, some of the more recent news involving Russia. So it was interesting to watch it because uh, it had a completist sort of arc ending at like the 90s. Uh, but a lot of the themes kind of carried on. But it was a great drama uh, throughout. Um, I try to watch a, a lot of TV and I'll try to watch it. I just do it. Um, but uh, yeah, that one in particular is one that, that just the timing and how long it kind of took us to get through with streaming services and stuff like that uh, was, was the last one that's really kind of stuck with me. If you haven't watched it, I would recommend it. What's it called? Uh, the Americans. The Americans. How many mm. how many episodes or series is it? It is, I want to say it's six seasons, five yeah. or six seasons in total. And I think they arc at about 20 episodes each. So, so you got to get a while episodes. to watch. Yeah. How long did that take mm. you to watch? Uh, well, the, considering it wasn't available on some streaming services as we went on, it was actually through a couple of uh, years that we completed it. But when oh. we realized we had access to the last season, my wife and I went back and, and watched straight through kind of single shot. Is it a sh- day, obviously, yeah. but <laughs> we, we took breaks, yeah. went to the bathroom and things like that. <laughs> so is it a show that has a purposeful end, like they planned it to be six seasons and it ties up nicely? Or is it like after six seasons, everybody lost interest in money and it just awkwardly stopped? <laughs> Uh, no, I, actually, it's it's one that had a purpose, and and I think uh, nailed the landing there. There's one thing that's so impressive about it is a lot of shows that tend to, to run out of steam, especially yeah. ones that air kind of in North America. They're always trying to get that last little bit of juice out. Right. Um, but yeah, no, this one this one arced pretty well. There's a season in the middle that's generally regarded as kind of like the slog of it all, um, but even that ended up paying off a bit in the end. Okay. Cool. I just you find all these TV type people sound like thinking, what we've got to do today? Oh, we've got to do season 47 of that. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> you know, because we've got, but, no, we've got advertisers of book till season 86 or something like that. We've got... <laughs> but I genuinely um, thought Sean was going to say, though, it's ironic that they, he started watching the Americans when he moved to Canada. Right. <laughs> right. There's that too. Just one yeah. at home. Uh, question four. We have got, sorry, uh, Andrew, uh, a London scape. Should we have changed mm-hmm. that when you've been on? Um, some toy bricks. An opera house or a playground? I've got to go with the toy bricks for my kids. Got to. Toy bricks. Question. When did you last have to complain about the service? Oh, well, gingers don't really complain because we don't like getting beaten up. Well, uh, an actual fact, um, bright orange well, uh, for, for psychology, bright orange provokes hostility. And that yeah. is why so, yeah, that's why so many people react in anger to redheads because of the mop on the top. Well, it's the same like um, how uh, you know, like, uh, light blue has a calming effect on people. Green is known for being envious. Red is normally associated with anger, but apparently anger and hostility, two separate things. Well, uh, when I was at school, I used to get beat up on a bi-daily basis. Well, um, like I, said, I grew up in the 90s and then the early 2000s. So yeah, it yeah. was I'm kind of waiting time. for the punchline though, where you're like, and I stopped referring to people's mothers and that helped too, you know, like, <laughs> well, and- well, in fairness, like, yeah, when you say the word punchline, and I'm talking about getting beaten up, that could be the punchline. John, you can pick uh, London Scape, Sydney Opera House or a uh, playground. Uh, I go with the playground. The playground. When was the last time you made a snowman? There's a Canadian maple leaf there. So it's interesting because everyone's like, oh, you're moving to Canada. You're probably dealing with a lot of snow. Uh, but Barbara, I think you're in Seattle mm-hmm. area. Uh, yeah, no, no snow here. It is my uh, one, once last time I complained about the service, I complained to British Columbia of where's the snow around Vancouver? Because uh, I love snow. I'm a big, I'm a big snow person. Uh, it's one of the reasons I have at least one more move left in my future. Um, but yeah, the last time I made a snowman was probably three or four years ago. So the, the winter just prior to the pandemic, which is when I moved. Uh, we got a chance to, to, to go out and uh, make a snowman there. But I, I love the snow. I'm, I'm a big go out and make the, the fort, snow forts, snowball fights, uh, just going and generally romping around it, getting my dog out there, letting him trounce through it. Um, absolutely great. But uh, I think my favorite thing is when you make a really good quality snowman is then watching it kind of battle against the clock to survive because it's really a metaphor for life. Sometimes it degrades and it doesn't really go well, but sometimes it just kind of slowly fades away and uh, add some more water to the earth there. Oh, that's some nihilism with your snowman there. Yeah. Sheesh, all ends in death. 
have a task for anybody that wants to make a snowman, which is that you've got to find a pipe to put in his mouth because they're probably like, don't exist anymore. Yeah, actually, I just put a patch on my snowman because he's trying to quit. Ah! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, probably easy to find. Yeah, good. Um, uh, question five, uh, Andrew, uh, treasure chest, a space nebula, a submarine or a water pistol? Got to go with the nebula. The nebula. What is the worst thing you've been late for? Picking up my kids. You know, having to pick them up at nursery can be a bit of a pain because like, I love my own kids, but I don't like other people's kids. Yeah. I don't want to be around them. My kids always talk about uh, the other kids in nursery, but in the worst possible terms. Like they always talk about like uh, one one boy hit them or uh, one girl bit them or whatever. Mm. What and I'm just like, I don't like the fact that you're around these things. You, you never have the urge to punch a small child until they're doing something to your own ki- uh, your kids. I think it's this, uh, as much as like sometimes gingers can get beat up for having the red hair. It can also work to the advantage because they also think don't tick off a redhead. And then when I turn up and I am being my usual charming self and then, oh, how are my boys? Oh, I love you both so much. How, how have you been? Have they been good? Oh, that's great. Our daddy loves you so much. Put up the smoke screen. They don't challenge. Mm. Constantly play the mind games, my friend. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, question uh, five for you. Uh, treasure chest. A treasure chest, uh, a submarine or a water pistol? Seems like you want to go with the treasure chest there. Well, I want so, to find out more I will about. As well. <laughs> I want to find out more about recreational ice hockey. So, question on the treasure chest is: How often do you win things? Uh, well, you know what? I'm still playing as an adult, so not that often. Because if I had I won previously, I probably would have been satisfied uh, with that. Uh, actually, there's one thing in particular that I win at all the time, and my wife cannot stand it. Uh, if you ever go to a sporting event uh, and they do the things. Uh, on video boards, things like that, or it's like, you know, we're going to shift around the three cups or uh, we're going to have this animated race. Who's going to get to the finish line? I think I'm on a couple year winning streak. And sometimes I don't even have to actually watch anything but the first couple of seconds. Uh, It's all the psychology of which they're going to pick one, two, three, based on how many home games they've had or things like that. I used to work in that field. So I have a little bit of a leg up. Um, But that is something that I have an uncanny ability to do. And I have to say, as much as I feel like I have a skill at it, there's been a lot of luck lately, but nothing is funnier than being at a sporting event. And they're like, hey, everybody, it's time for, and I'll go too. And then sure enough, it's right. <laughs> and my wife cannot stand it because I don't even know what it is yet. Just somehow the way they're phrasing it and teeing it up, my brain just triggers and is able to pick the right answer. Uh, That's interesting. Because yeah. like they know which one it's be underneath, right? So they're going to they're gonna yeah. give away some tell. Yeah, you know, there's, there's a little bit, well, sometimes there's a little bit of a tell, but it's all about just kind of thinking strategy wise, because uh, I'll give you all a little tip. Uh, you know, if you have a lot of home games, so something like uh, ice hockey, um, you know, baseball is actually a really great example where they play a ton of games at home, is there's a lot of people are going to see that game over and over and over. So you start getting into the psychology of, all right, this is like the second home game in a row. So it's probably not going to be the number it was before. And then because they had one a couple days ago, maybe it's not that one. You can really start to dive into it, but other times it's it's just dumb luck but uh yeah i usually try to get my answer in immediately just to really rile up everybody when i'm right yet again well as i always say there's only two secrets in life number one is don't tell everyone all your secrets Um, (laughs) (laughs) to send one of these funksters to the next round follow the link in the description to the episode page on funkythinkers.com and comment who you want to win you can play funk quest yourself after you leave your vote do not vote on Spreaker or YouTube or iHeartRadio or any other platforms you might be listening on because these votes will not be counted. Gents, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, Sean, how can we uh, find out more about you and listen to your book, podcast, buy all your stuff and generally send you money? Uh, yeah, you know what? Actually, Instagram is probably the best way to connect with me, such as at Shawnee Hill. Uh, you can also go to my website, shawneehill.com. You will see I have not updated it to reflect my uh new weight but uh yeah it, it has a lot of the fun a lot of the goofy stuff i did there so feel free to check either of those out but you want to contact me through instagram is probably the easiest way excellent thank you uh, andrew how can we uh contact you and do the same listen to your show etc uh, if you want to look for that mental gender show on youtube where we discuss the arts and raise awareness for mental health issues uh, if you think i was nuts on here oh boy wait till you see the unfiltered version um if you want to it's the same like that mental gender show on the instagram twitter um, find me on Facebook, Andrew Durning, and you'll find out even more of my madness. And thank you so much for having me on. Gents, thank you so much. We will see one of you in the next round. We'll see one of you maybe as a sheriff. Thanks so much, uh, and we'll speak soon. Pleasure. Thank Take you care. so much. Cheers. Bye. Now.